Welcome to the Desk Bound Therapy Podcast, hosted by David London. David is a posture and mobility expert, yoga teacher, and certified online trainer. This podcast is about empowering desk bound professionals, how to live their healthiest life and move pain free. Now, let's dive into this episode. So the quote I wanted to share is that nothing in nature is in bloom all year, right? And so I think that plays, is very uh, relatable to us as human beings in multiple ways, right? We want to be on all the time. We want to be productive all the time. And we expect our bodies to feel in tip top shape all the time. And especially when we're dealing with chronic pain, I think it's a big permission slip that's needed that it's okay to not feel a hundred percent all the time because nothing in nature does right and so we shouldn't be an exception to that rule and it's okay to have days that aren't your best days I think that's a really great way we can really introduce what we're going to talk about on that episode and I'm really glad to have you here um, for episode 41 of the Desmond Therapy Podcast I'm I'm here today with Dr. Emma Welpton. She is a, a chiropractor. I guess I could call you a yogi. She's a very spiritual, pretty hip. She's cool. And I'm glad to have you on today. <laughs> We've been following each other for a while. And I, I really like that quote a lot because I've been starting to feel, you know, as we're in the end of August, it's almost like new beginnings. And, you know, I've been like looking into different ways I can change my training up and, you know, take some stress off my body. So really glad you shared that. Does, does it have like a personal like meaning for you? Like, is it something that you kind of talk to your clients about? I, I heard it a few years ago and it just hit home, you know, when something just strikes a chord. And for me, I grew up as an athlete and it was, you know, just I'm a go, go, go kind of person. And I need that permission sh- slip to say it's OK to take a day to rest. And then especially that transferred over when I started working with clients with chronic pain and helping people in their healing journeys, because again, nothing in nature is in bloom all year long. And so your healing is not a linear journey either. You're not going to be, you know, feeling your best all the time and it's okay. And I think that we need to understand that and realize that healing is not a linear journey. You're going to have ebbs and flows as with everything. You'll go through seasons, you'll go through cycles, right? Everything in nature is cyclical and we are part of that. Yeah, it's definitely a pretty interesting perspective, like the fact that, you know, nature is not in bloom all the time. And then we expect, you know, so much from our bodies all the time, whether it be, you know, working or, or training or just, you know, everyday activities, we, you always expect yourself to be able to always perform to the max, like, especially like early when I started working out, I would always be frustrated, you know, those, those when you have those bad workouts, or you have those bad games. So it's, it's interesting to kind of see that there's another way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not going to PR every time you're at the gym. <laughs> so just to, just to backtrack a little bit, you said you were you were into sports. How did you get into, you know, the whole like chronic pain and, and yoga and healthcare and all that? Mm, good question. So, yeah, I, I was like a big tomboy uh, growing up and played every sport out there. And so I was injured a lot. And through that, I started seeing my chiropractor, she was kind of like my primary care physician. She was who I went to for everything from like sprained ankles to MCL injuries to just like feeling sick and whatnot. Um, and so that really got me into just taking care of the problem at the root source and at the root cause and actually managing it through holistic, natural ways that actually take care of the problem instead of masking it and covering it and just, you know, brushing it under the rug. And so that's sort of what opened the doors for me into the world of natural health and um, chiropractic care. And then as I got older, I went to uh, university, played soccer in the States on a scholarship, did the thing and was incredibly burnt out. And so I ended up moving away from soccer and into yoga, which was just a more sustainable practice for me, better on my body, allowed my body to feel better. Um, And it was still something that I could challenge myself with and kind of push my boundaries of my physical capabilities with. Um, But at that same time, I was also starting to get really into 
the spirituality side of things and meditation. And so yoga kind of encompassed all that. And so, yeah, dove right into yoga and haven't looked back, graduated and as a chiropractor and kind of just blended the two together because they do go so well, like they go hand in hand with each other. Right. So. Yeah. It's cool to see that you've combined that specific modality. Cause that's something I've always wanted to do. Like I used to do yoga and personal training and now I'm trying to combine it with like physiotherapy. So it's cool. You're doing it on like the same end of the spectrum and trying to put it out there. And I've mm-hmm. noticed you've started to, you know, put out more, you know, the spiritual twist to it's good. Cause you know, I love your, all your quotes about mindset and like, I like your one yesterday about, you know, you know, it's not an expense to invest in your body and, you know, you shouldn't be in pain all the time. Like I find like, that's like a big thing is, is, you know, coming back from having, whether it be lower back pain or any chronic pain is, is, you know, communicating it with people like in a way that resonates with them. Exactly. And getting on their level. Cause I think you can probably relate to this too. And I was just talking to somebody the other day, we forget where other people's mindsets are in terms of the general population, how they see injuries, how they see healing and how they view health and health care. And, it, you know, it's, it, we have to bring ourselves back down to their understanding and their perspective and their view so that we can, again, you know, talk about pulling on heartstrings and hitting that chord that really hits home for them. You're only going to hit home for them when you are talking on the same playing field. Um, but yeah, I think too, that now that, um, just the research has come such a long way in terms of pain, how it's processed in the body. Like we are at a point now where it is silly to not look at the mindset and the, 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 just the brain and how it plays a role in how you feel in your body in turn, in, even in like day-to-day lifestyle, how you feel and how you show up in your life and, and chronic pain and how you heal from that and how you manage your pain and the pain that you feel in your body. There's so much research behind your thoughts and your beliefs and the emotional component to it, right? It's not just this musculoskeletal, pain complex right it is so much more than that it's the biopsychosocial model of pain and so we have to involve belief systems and thought patterns and neuroplasticity and how uh, how is our brain and the things that we can't necessarily see or feel how are those impacting our what we can see and feel because they are there, even though we can't see them and they are very much real and very much playing a role in how we live our lives and how we feel in our bodies and how we show up every single day. Yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of great information there. And it's true. Cause you know, a lot of the times, you know, when you do have an injury, it does have a, a big, like it does affect you, your mindset. Like you feel you have, you get into like that negative mindset and then, you know, people need to understand that that can, you know, just increase, you know, how much pain you're, you're necessarily feeling. So I think it's, you know, um, a good first step for people to really just understand that, like that what's going on and us communicating with them, you know, the, the right approach to have around it. Because a lot of times you can do, as you said, I'm sure, you know, for all your patients, you start with, you know, having conversation then going to, you know, a physical assessment, but for a lot of people, you know, it, it can be a little bit different if you take that more holistic approach. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think that just to combine the two is so powerful to obviously still take care of and manage and, and treat the physical body. But I think we're missing a big, big piece if we're not looking at the emotional psycho so you know psychosocial aspect of healing and pain right and it's especially when we think about stress in today's day and age right with everything going on in the world everybody is stressed and if we can just teach the greater population how stress impacts their body how it impacts their health how it impacts their healing on a physiological level i think that if we can just educate the population and how how powerful stress is in terms of healing um we can make some big leaps forward in in people's journeys because I was even just talking to a patient on Thursday and she was she's healing from a really intense acute low back um injury 
And I'm explaining to her, you know, your body is always healing. Your body wants to feel good and it is always healing. And probably she was all, you know, very, cause when we, are, when we are in pain, we're stressed, especially when you're a working mom, business owner, you know, you've got kids at home, you've got stress of just the day-to-day -day life, plus the world events that are going on, you know, plus then being in pain, your body's overwhelmed in stress. And then you want so desperately to feel better and get out of this acute flare up so that you can be a good mom and, you know, do the business things and live your life. But the best, so you're stressed about how do I get back there? And, and what can I do at home? And what can I, what exercises should I do? And this, that, and the next thing. And for her, I just knew that there was so much on her plate, giving her, you know, rehab exercises, do this every morning and this every day. And this is this. I said, listen, your body is always healing. Your body wants to feel better. The thing that is pressing the brakes on your body healing naturally right now is the stress that you're under. So I gave you, I gave her like one exercise to do, but I was like, the best thing that you can do for yourself right now is to manage your stress. That is it. Manage your stress and your body will take care of the rest because your stress that is happening in your body right now are the breaks to your healing. And so rather than adding in something more and pressing the gas, let's just take our foot off the brake. You know what I mean? There's no point of having your foot on the brake, you know, having the stress slowing things down and just trying to ram on the gas gas pedal and implement all these different things and stress yourself even more and try and do the exercises that are really going to help you feel better. Why are we adding more stress? Like let's just for certain people, especially in today's day and age, you know, before we press the gas, let's take our foot off the brake. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Cause you know, a lot of people think, you know, what exercise I can add or what else I can do to recover? Do I, you know, should I start foam rolling, cupping, massage gutting, doing everything versus just like allowing yourself and allowing your body to do its thing? Yeah. Bring your nervous system down, chill out, and your body is capable of healing. And you being stressed is the biggest block. So <laughs> and I've always told my clients that when you put your body in the right position, um, you know, it has a huge capacity for healing itself. And that's not only, you know, like positioning in terms of posture, but it's, you know, it's, you know, it's your stress and your mental health and all those things. But when those are all set, you know, the body is a really, really capable of healing. Absolutely. So what are some like other stress management strategies you use with your, you know, your clients or um, in some of your, with some of your clients and then before you like give them any exercises or anything? Because you mentioned you gave them one exercise just to kind of start them off with something small. Yep. So the stress practice that I give most of my clients that I work with online, people that I see in the clinic um, is breath work. And that's where yoga really ties in as well. Yes, yoga is great because we move the body and people always think about it's improving your flexibility and all that stuff. And yes, we can do a lot of strength training and it's really great for the physical body to help you. We can use yoga to basically rehab the physical body, but probably my favorite part of yoga is using it to calm the nervous system and to do the breath work and using it as a practice of coming back to yourself, breathing into your belly, calming the nervous system, because that has been proven through multiple studies. It has a very effective um, and impactful way on your nervous system to just calm everything down, decrease your stress on a physiological level, right? And so breath work is definitely my go-to in managing stress. It's easy, it's cheap, it's accessible. No matter where you are, what situation you're in, you always have it, right? You don't need anything special. So it's always there. It's accessible. It's um, easy to do. Anyone can do it really. And so, and it's very effective. So that is absolutely hands down my number one go-to for stress management. Yeah. I saw you did a live one the other day and that one was pretty cool. I think you, you I think it was like your live about stress. Yeah. That was, yeah, that, that was a good one. I was there. I was there for a few minutes of that. Yeah. Is there like a, like a minimum effective dose required, especially for, you know, the busy people working at their desk, like is, you know, two to five minutes of breath work enough or would you get more long lasting benefits with, you know, 15 to 30 minutes? 
you're going to get longer or you're going to get uh, deeper benefits the longer you practice the breath work. Um, but the studies have shown that you just need one minute, one minute of deep breathing into the bottom of your, of your lungs, into the lower belly, keeping the chest steady and still, like not breathing through the upper shoulders, keeping all of this still and just breathing into the lower belly, getting that diaphragm to move. Within one minute of doing that, you can see changes on a physiological level in stress hormone and um, switching your body from a stress state into your parasympathetic relaxation state of uh, the branches of your nervous system. Yeah, well, one minute, that's pretty incredible. Like I'm sure the people listening right now can go ahead and, you know, spend a minute and take just a nice deep breath. But I find, you know, when you get stressed out, you you stop thinking really rationally and you just it sometimes can even be hard to remember to to take that one minute. I find like you kind of just get like tunnel vision or just distracted or, you know, you know, the feeling. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for me, the biggest way around that is just building almost self-awareness. And it's just a practice of recognizing where am I breathing? Like we do it all the time. We breathe all the time. And it's the one thing in your body that you can do voluntarily and involuntarily. And so it's just a practice of being aware of it and voluntarily taking a little bit deeper inhale and a little bit longer exhale. And just taking that one breath in a moment of stress, in a moment of overwhelm, in a moment of panic to just know, okay, whoa, my breath is in my chest. Let me just take one good breath. Like you literally don't even need to stop walking. You can still be panicking on the inside, but it's just that practice. I, I, I don't know how else to say it other than it's just a practice. Everything comes with practice. The more you do it, the easier it is to do. Right. And it doesn't need to be stop everything, put everything on hold. Let me breathe for a minute, start my timer. You know, it can literally be in the midst of it all, just in your brain saying, okay, I'm stressed. My breath is not in my belly, it's in my chest. Let me just take one deep inhale and one deep exhale. And that makes a difference. That makes an impact. You have more neurological endings at the bottom of your lungs that basically connect your parasympathetic nervous system. Your parasympathetic nervous system is your rest and digest, right? It's your, it's your relaxation state. It's where you want to be hanging out in, right? And so just taking one breath deep into the lungs, getting the lungs to expand, tickling those nerves that then go back and say, hey, parasympathetic nervous system, like let's turn on and let's activate that one deep inhale is going to be beneficial for you. So it's just a, 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 an awareness practice of being aware of your breath and taking a little bit deeper of an inhale. Hi, my name is Sandy and I work with David with Desbound Therapy and I've been a client of his for a year and seven months now so his uh his mobility work is great i do his online training as well i think it's fabulous how even though he's still not there in person but you still have the the connection and like the um, corrections of the movements if you need to he's very much on top of just the program itself how you're feeling how your body's reacting to certain movements um there's certain movements that maybe aren't aren't doable for for what you're um, you're able to do so he understands that and, and works with you on that so I originally had gone to see him with a lot of knee stiffness and I do have arthritis in my knees so I am challenged in a way being flexible and movements and certain exercises and that his program is great and he does work with you and just you know like today I'm able to you know squat and do deadlifts and my balance work was actually kind of horrible but with his work, I am able to stabilize and, and it was one side I like twist too much and another side. So it kind of balanced me out a little bit. So uh, it's fabulous and uh, I would highly recommend using his program, uh, especially with the mobility. He's always encouraging to like stretch and do your mobility work throughout the day, morning, nights, afternoons, uh, at your desk and so forth. So it, it's really good. So yeah, it's a it's a good program. So I highly recommend them. Yeah, and I find myself like when I'm doing computer work or I'm you know I'm working with patients. I try to I find the periods that I do try to really like maintain that high level of self awareness on my breath. 
are the periods where I feel like I'm, you know, the most productive and the most calm and most focused. That's actually when you get stuff done, like just like that reminder just now to like focus back on my breathing. Like it really, you'll notice how quickly you can get those effects. And I find that, you know, when I do that, I do have better posture when I'm working because, you know, I'm breathing properly, you know, everything's opening up versus, you know, right. when you're breathing a little shallow, you're, you're going to, you're going to creep forward. So like, there's lots of benefits beyond just, you know, just like making you less stressed, but it's going to help you like feel better in your body as well. Exactly. And if you're taking a deep, cause I know you work with a lot of people that are desk bound. And when you take a deep breath into your belly, you literally can't be in that forward punch position. You can't get a deep inhale in. you can't allow the diaphragm to expand fully. So just taking that deep inhale, you almost automatically sit up tall and correct your posture so that you have space in the abdomen to take that deep breath in. It is for sure the best biohack I know. It has just breathing into my belly and, and capitalizing on the benefits and the power that the breath has is by far hands down the thing that has helped me out the most in life and has been the biggest biohack. Like I'm sure you can relate to in taking big exams through your, your schooling you know, process and all that, your education um, journey through some of those really big board exams that like your life depends on, it's so overwhelming. And when you're that stressed, you have decreased oxygen to the brain. So you're not thinking properly. You're not going to perform as well on your exam. And so just taking those deep breaths into the belly before my exams, like I swear 5% higher grade instantly, just because of the breath, right? It's the best biohack. Anytime you're super anxious, like it will change your anatomy, it will change who you are. And so just taking that deep breath, you know, and being aware of the benefits of it. So now when you have to go and have a really tough conversation with your boss, or you're feeling overwhelmed with your kids, and you're going to snap on them, like it is literally the best biohack. Yeah, I'm going to try to start doing that more, especially now knowing that one minute is, is enough, and it can be one minute every, you know, five minutes just to check in with yourself. And then by doing it more frequently, there'll be more reminders, you know, to, to, you know, straighten out your posture, to stand up, to move positions. It's a good way you can kind of combine a lot of things together in one simple task. Mm -hmm. I was also curious, how did you become interested in, you know, specializing in lower back pain specifically? I just see so many people suffer from low back pain and it's something that, is absolutely because of our day-to-day activities. And so if it's because of our day-to-day activities, then that means that we can change those and make our bodies, specifically the lower back, feel better. It is the number one cause of days off work and disability in the United States of America. And it is the most common area in your body, in your spine at least, to have pain. And so for me, I went through a phase as well. When I first graduated as a chiropractor, I started practicing and, you know, I was very fortunate to be in a situation where I was fully booked and very busy and working a lot of hours and seeing a lot of patients. But truth be told, it was not good for me. It was not good for my body. It wasn't good for my mental health. I was burnt out. I was fatigued. I was sore. I was having a lot of low back pain because I was working so much and I completely lost my yoga practice. I lost taking care of myself. I, I stopped moving my body. I wasn't practicing what I was preaching because I was so busy and overwhelmed and I'd get home and I was fatigued and exhausted. and I'd crash on the couch. And so I went through this phase of having pretty intense low back pain. And I remember one day in particular, I was laying in bed and there was literally like a throbbing sensation in my hips. And I couldn't, it was like nine o'clock. And I just like went to bed because I was sore and I was unhappy. And there was nothing else for me to do because I wasn't going to do anything productive because I was sore. So I just like called it a night, put on a show and went to bed. And I remember laying there being like, okay, this is pathetic. My 
hips are so sore. My back is achy. I'm 28. Why am I in bed at nine o'clock on a Friday because of my back? Like there is something I can do about this. And at that time, when you're, if you're ever in that position feeling like, okay, I know that movement is going to be better for me and it's going to help. But the thought of moving is daunting. The thought of moving is overwhelming. The thought of rolling out my yoga mat and doing an hour movement is overwhelming when you're sore. And so it was that night that I rolled out my yoga mat and I was like, I want to be here as short as humanly possible. I want to be here to get out of pain and be very specific with my movements, short and sweet so I can get back into bed, not have back pain so I can fall asleep comfortably. And so I didn't do any yoga sequences. I didn't do anything fancy. I did the most basic things that I knew that were specifically going to help my low back and hips. And I was on my mat for maybe 10 minutes tops. And I got up, got back in my bed and I laid there and I was like, I have no pain, no achiness. That throbbing sensation was gone. And that's when I had this light bulb moment of it doesn't, movement doesn't need to be lengthy to be beneficial. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be a full hour. It doesn't have to be anything fancy or lengthy, especially when we get really specific. And so it was from that experience that I had this light bulb aha moment. And I was like, I went on my own journey of helping my own low back with very specific, because again, I was still at that time working a lot of hours and seeing a lot of patients. And so I didn't have a lot of time. So I healed my low back through meditation and movement and specifically movement that was super specific, super short and specific so that it wasn't lengthy so that I could, it wasn't overwhelming so that I actually showed up and did it and could stay consistent with it. And so When I did that and healed my low back using those techniques, that sort of the method that I used and then created to help other people do the same. And so that's what I do now. (laughs) Yeah. So that's where it came from. So what's your, what's your program specifically like? Is it um, like, is, is all the yoga sequences tailored to the lower back or do you have some of the, some breath work in there and some other stress activities in there? Yeah. So it's not necessarily yoga sequences. So what we do, it's the yoga plus method. And the idea behind that is that we're taking sort of the yoga philosophies and the movements and um, yeah, the yoga poses and implementing, you know, both the spiritual side and the science side and, and merging them together to create this sort of holistic rehab program. Um, And so instead of it being yoga sequences, there are the first eight modules are taking the sort of the eight key components to low back pain, the eight sort of anatomical pieces that play a role in most people's lower back pain, chronic low back pain. And we work through each of those eight factors. So say module three is all about the hips, hip mobility, um, that type of thing. So there's different, very short, specific, just like I healed myself. You don't need 20 minutes. It's not a sequence. It's this one exercise. I want you to do this one exercise. It takes two minutes. You can do it while the kettle boils. There's no excuse to not do it because it's so short and simple that you then feel like, oh yeah, I could do this. It's two minutes. And then all of a sudden, you do that and you do it consistently and it's the consistency that that's when you see big changes. So it's little snack bites throughout your day of movement. And every week those movements change and every week they add on to each other. Um, and it's not until the end of the program that you're almost like, okay, you you now understand the anatomy of having lower back pain and you understand the basic movements, the basic rehab, and you've done the basic rehab. Now we can graduate into having a little bit more freedom in your movements and ability to flow through a yoga sequence and have some freedom to choose your own movement sequences. And um, yeah, just a little bit more flexibility in, in choosing how you move your body. Um, Because at that point you've built some resiliency in the spine, which is the end goal, right? We want to build resiliency so that you can do the things that you want to do so that you can bend and not break. Yeah. And I really like how you were saying you were, you know, you were aching and then you just did 10 minutes 
and you felt, you know, amazing. It's crazy how fast the body can respond if you're doing, you know, mm -hmm. the right exercises and what's appropriate for your body. Because, you know, yeah. a lot of, a lot of times, like, like I'll even be, you know, working for a bit and I'll go do, for example, some, some like scapular mobility or something after like sitting in my chair for a while and be like, wow, you know, that effect lasted me hours. It's crazy. Cause when you're sitting there or sometimes when in your pain, you can kind of feel hopeless, but the more you kind of find these 10 minute routines or different ways to, that your body likes, you can really have a, a big tool set of knowledge and skills and exercises you can do. Like, for example, like when my, when my hips get sore, there's like one specific exercise I go to all the time and it, it always works. So it's cool that you've kind of discovered that as well. Absolutely. Never underestimate the power of like 10 minutes of movement. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Like I find like in the morning, like if I don't stretch in the morning, do some mobility, get my hips moving, get my back moving, then like as soon as I know, as soon as I sit down to get to work, I'm going to be sore. But it's crazy. Like even just doing some cat cows and some some bends and some stuff on the roller, how I can just like it just feels like I have a new back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we tend to get, get, you know, pretty, pretty stiff overnight. And I find like, if you get to that point and then you wait to like stretch throughout the day or to move, then sometimes it can take the body a bit longer to respond, but everyone will have their, you know, their own unique, you know, adaptation to, to developing a routine. But it sounds like your program is pretty in depth and I know people are getting some good results from it. Yeah. Thanks. Is there, um, where can people find out more information? Um, lots of places. You can go to my website. It's just dremmawelpton.com. So dremmawelpton.com. My Instagram is at dr.dr.emmawelpton. Um, and then also in my Facebook group, we have a couple of live trainings there every week and all that good stuff. And that's the movement Facebook group. Um, Emma Welpton's the movement Facebook group, but yeah, just I'm accessible. Most active, I think on Instagram, if you want to shoot me a message and we can chat from there. Yeah, guys, definitely give her a follow. She's got some of the nicest photos I've seen. They always look very professional. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to finish off with a rapid fire questions. This is a fun segment we do at the end. I'm going to yeah. ask you, you know, five or 10 personal questions so the followers can get to know you and just kind of answer Ooh. off the top of your head. So okay. um, who's your greatest inspiration and why? Who is my greatest inspiration and why? Oh, God, these are I'm, I'm not good on the spot. Um if I, okay, so I'll just say what comes to my mind first. Rachel Brathen, if you guys don't follow her, she's at Yoga Girl. I followed her since like Instagram first came on the market. Um, and I've seen her go through some wild things in life and see how she handles them with grace and with ease. And she's just a very inspirational human um, to follow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I've heard of her. She's got quite the, the page and the following. So that's cool yeah. that, that you've been inspired by her. What is your biggest challenge in your business and how did you overcome it? What is the biggest challenge in my business? Online business or treating patients in person? I guess both or you can pick one. I would say um, honoring. I think any time that like you are your business, like I am my business. You are your business, right? We are entrepreneurs and we create our own business. And with that, it can get very blurred lines between business and personal. And we can come, for me, I know specifically, I have been in the past just fully buried in my business where I've lost track of myself and my own personal time and self-care. And I was just too much into my business. And I had to learn how to delegate, hire, and step back so that I could be a happier, healthier person, which in then helps the business. No, I definitely feel that when I find like, especially when you're working from home and running your online business, you could work all day and never get that, that rest and relax. Yeah, for sure. I hired a virtual assistant a couple months ago and it was the best thing I did. <laughs> oh yeah, me too. It was it's definitely a game changer because you're really getting back that time to focus on yourself, like you said. So, you know, you're not working all day and having that back pain. Yeah. I know you have a pretty cool morning routine. So what's your like morning routine like? I know you do a bit of, you know, movement and meditation, but is there anything in particular that helps you set up your day? I always have some sort of morning routine, but it does change depending on what I need. Um, 
always the thing that does not ever change is just having quiet time by myself with my coffee. And in that quiet time, it'll change whether I'm meditating, visualization practices, um, gratitude practice. And if I were to say one, I would probably say gratitude in one way or another is always a part of my morning routine. I think it just helps with the mindset because your reticular activation system in your brain is always trying to pick up on patterns. And so if you start your day seeing the good things in your life, your brain for the rest of the day, it's the way that it functions, will try to see other good things. So just starting my day with a gratitude practice is uh, the thing. Yeah, quiet time with my coffee and so a little bit of gratitude never changes. That is my go-to forever and always, no matter where I am, what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, so you had a nice coffee this morning. So it's definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely part of the routine for, for me is here as well. Uh, last question is the, is the toughest one. So. Uh -oh. um, if you had the world's attention for one minute, what would you say? Nothing political, just more like in terms of your, your beliefs and, or even. Your health is your wealth. And nothing can replace that. Good message. It's, it's, it's clear and it's concise. And it's, it's the truth. Yeah. It's the truth. You spend your money. It's like that quote or whatever that saying is, is like, you know, we spend our life working and then which I don't even know, I'm going to butcher it. So I'm not going to say it, but it's basically, we spend our lives working and it's like, for what, for, for us to, we spend our lives working to be overwhelmed with stress to then, you know, just deteriorate our health over years and years and years until we come to a point where we don't have our health and all that money we spent our whole lives making, we now spend to get our health back. Your health is your birthright. You are born with natural intelligence in your body and you are, your body wants to feel good and your body wants to be healthy. And it's just about honoring that and listening to your body and staying in tune before so that you don't get so far away from your natural health that you don't even know what that is anymore. And you've completely lost it. And now you're spending some big bucks to get your health back, right? So hang on to your health because your health is wealth. Yeah, and I find it, yeah, you know, I'm sure you can relate. Like I find it too, a lot of times when I talk to people about my program or, or for coaching or even assessment, a lot of people don't value themselves enough to invest in their health. Like they, like they're, they're, even though they're in chronic pain, they just like a lot of people, like whether it be like family or just money, like they just like have trouble like investing until they're really so deep into it. And they're just like, they're stuck in that cycle. So just, you know, for those out there who are in that position, you know, as Emma's posted yesterday, it's the best investment you can make is in, in your health. And it's definitely yeah. a, a great note to finish off on. It's not an expense you're investing. It's an investment right? Spending money on your health is never an expense. It is always an investment. It is an investment into your future. It's an, invest an investment into your loved one's futures. It's an investment into your children's futures because without your health, what do you have, right? doesn't matter how many Ferraris you have parked in your garage. Without your health, you can't drive your Ferrari, right? So that should come first. It's about taking your foot off the brake and clearing the, the cars from the mind, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the brake analogy. Thanks so much for coming on. Second guest of season two. Super Yay. glad, super glad to have you on here. And as she mentioned before, you can find her on Instagram. I think Dr. Um, Emma Welpton. I'll have the, the link in the show notes for those of you who want to follow her and check out her program. So thanks so much for coming and I uh, hope to have you back on soon. Thank you for having me on the podcast. I enjoyed it. Awesome.